God provides, so why do I worry about my life? When you come to my rescue a thousand times, every other voice it is a lie. God provides, God provides in ways I can't explain and can't deny. The little that I have, He multiplies. Just when I feel He won't show up on time, God provides. He'll come through when the clouds of doubt rain down on you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you today to another Sunday Reflection. And already it is the end of the month of April. Wow. And you see how the world is moving and how the years are moving by quickly. But in all of this, we give God thanks. So we welcome you for another Sunday Reflection from the Mount Zion Church, Barton, Lilliput, Mount Zion Congregation, and Farmites by extension. Also, those of you who listen to us in the wider Jamaican context, in the Caribbean, North American region, and also in Europe, European region. We trust that as we share this moment of reflection with you, that God will, stru will truly inspire you, grant you healing, deliverance, and victory through the word that is shared. I want to commence with the singing of a song, a long time song that I used to love singing. Still has value, meaning, and purpose in the Christian community um, until you know the love of God. And this one version is done by Miriam Iglesias. Trust me. Jesus, he's saving grace. 
brothers and sisters, until we know the loving hand that reaches down to fallen man and pick him up from out of sin where he has fallen until we know just how it feels to know that God is really real. We know nothing until we know the love of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your love that is so great and reaches so far because you're too, you so love us that you gave your only begotten son to die for us. Father, we pray for people who are destitute of love today. So many feel that nobody loves them, nobody wants them, nobody wants to be around them. Oh God, like they are worthless and they have no sense of humanity. Father, I pray that your love will be extended to them right now, wherever they are. Let them feel loved. Let them feel, O oh God Almighty, the warmth of your embrace and that God, you still care about them and that if they were the only ones that were still existing on earth, you would still come and die for them. Father, I pray that your love will break down barriers and boundaries and heartaches and pains and release those who are oppressed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for the broken, for the disenfranchised, for the bruised, the battered, those who feel so desperate, those who are sick and seek healing. I pray that you will reach out to them. I pray for those who are poverty stricken, those, O oh God, are trodden down. Lord, will you lift them up right now? I pray that you will do for them what they think is impossible. Maybe they think that, God, Lord, nothing can be done about their situation. But I pray that you will demonstrate that there is enough power in the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, to break the yokes and to set the captives free. Release the oppressed right now. We speak against all of those philosophies and ideologies that try to discredit the name of Jesus. Jesus, may you demonstrate your power in the universe so that they will see that you are God and you are Lord and you are Master. You are exalted above all else. In your name we pray. Amen. the loving hand, brother, you know nothing until you know the love of God. I want to share a word with us today. And I trust that this word will bring inspiration and healing to your situation right now. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 3. That's, that is Ephesians chapter 3. And we'll read verse 14 to 21. 14 to 21. It says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to, the, to be strengthened with might by spirit in the inner person that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that he be being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. No one to him, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that work in us. 
unto him be glory in the in the church by Christ Jesus through all ages world without end amen father will you bless your word to our hearts bring healing transformation and break every yoke through the power of your word in Christ's name amen i want to share with us today on this little topic beyond human comprehension beyond human comprehension the word comprehension comes from a latin word comprehend the name which means seizing a uh, seizing which when comprehends as when one comprehends a subject matter he or she actually sees the information sees the information the information provided or encountered is now captured and incorporated into one's own knowledge base now comprehension then is any kind of of grasping of a subject matter or an idea the scope the breadth the length the essence of it perceiving it in a sense as related to the word comprehend the word fathom serves as a synonymous term meaning to work out to make sense of to grasp to catch to capture to assimilate to absorb or to get to the bottom of so those two words work hand in hand they are terms in common brothers and sisters when it comes to human comprehension humans seem to be better able to understand what is perceived through the the five senses so most people cannot relate to something if they are not tangible what we see what we feel what we touch what we taste what we hear what we smell and the tangibles we are able to analyze scientifically and to understand their properties which in process of which is a process i should say of intellectual and practical activities um yes and that is what it is it is soaking up that kind of information when we embark on a systematic study of the visible the tangibles um the 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 the, the behavior of the physical natural world through observation and our um experiment tation this is why some scientists do not believe in god because it requires when you believe in god it requires that you move from the natural to the perceivable through your senses to the supernatural it requires that you move from the tangible brothers and sisters to the spiritual in order to understand the ways of god because the bible tells us that the ways of god is past finding out through human comprehension and requires divine revelation through the power of the holy spirit through the power of the holy spirit in order to understand the ways of god and who god really is because god is a spirit and the bible says and they who worship him must worship god in spirit and in truth so there are some people who try to unravel god through their natural abilities the intellectual abilities through their natural senses oh brothers and sisters that is not possible the ways of god are so enormous it cannot be fully comprehend or we cannot by human searching find out god hear what romans 11 verse 33 says oh the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and the knowledge of god how unsearchable are his judgment and his ways are past finding out so if we try to find out i want to read i just feel impressed to read that again 
Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and his ways are past finding out. So there are a lot of human beings who through their small intellect try to unravel God and the ways of God. You cannot because your mind is like a, a nutshell or a shell in the middle of the ocean. Once the shell is filled with water, it can hold no more in terms of the sea. So it's the same thing in the sea of knowledge. Our minds are limited. God is infinite. We are finite. God is unlimited in his scope, in his being. We are limited in our being. The text from which we read is a continuation of the thoughts Paul shared and expressed in the earlier part of the chapter. In verse 2 and to 6 of the same passage in Romans chapter uh, 3, Paul is writing, saying, If we have heard of the dispensation of grace of God, which is given me to you, Lord, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote before in few words, whereby when he read, he may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of, of men, as it is now revealed unto his, only, unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Paul is actually saying that the knowledge we now are able to attain and to grapple with, this, grab, this knowledge was not available in the Old Testament times. So it is the Holy Spirit who now is revealed to us, brothers and sisters, that we can now learn more of God through this dispensation because there is a connection between our spirit, the Holy Spirit, and God. In, in these verses, Paul claim, is, Paul's claim is that this dispensation of grace, of the grace of God, which God extends to the Gentiles through him, Paul, comes through revelation. It is through revelation that is now made known unto him and to the apostles and prophets and followers of Christ. He calls it the mystery of the kingdom, so that when we read this epistle, we may understand the knowledge of the mystery of Christ, which is in other, in other ages was not made known. Brothers and sisters, it was not made known unto humankind, as it is now revealed by the Holy Spirit. The Bible also tells us that the natural person cannot understand the things of God. That's why people rail against the things of God. The natural person with your own natural mind cannot understand the things of God, neither can you know them, because they are spiritually discerned. In verse, in verse 14 and 15, brothers and sisters, it is for this cause, Paul says, we bow, we bow our knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the whole family of the earth is, is named for the, for the following reasons. He, he says that he bow his knees and prays that the followers of Christ will, will now come into an understanding of this revelation to which he makes reference. Brothers and sisters, in verse 16, part A, one, that God would bless us according to the riches of his glory. Hmm? So let us look at verse 19, and then we just come back and pinpoint some of the things. Verse 19 to 16 to 19, Paul is saying um, in the text, he says, and that he might re reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having uh, having slain the enemy thereof. Brothers and sisters, I think we are reading the, the wrong um, verse. Let us get back over. Verse 16, he says, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner person that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that 
that he may be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that he might be filled with all the fullness of God. So Paul says he bows his knees, he prays that people's understanding will be clarified as it is related to God and who God is. There are a lot of people railing on God, railing on Jesus, railing on Christian, railing on the church by their own understanding. They feel that they know so much. But brothers and sisters, you cannot buy railing and by your own searching find out God. It says that God would bless us according to the riches of his glory and this and this and spiritually, physically, financially, and that God's glory would become brothers and sisters known to us in an enormous way. Um, Psalm fifty verse ten to fifteen tells us of the, the riches, the, the, the natural riches and resources of God, a thousand cattle on the hills belong to him. The beasts of the forest belong to him. If he was hungry, he says, he would not have asked us. So the Bible wants us to understand that the Lord, his riches is inexhaustible. Verse 16, that the readers may be strengthened with might by spirit on the inner person. Yes, that's one thing. That Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith, verse 17. Verse 17, B, that they may be rooted and grounded in love, verse 18 to, to 19, that they may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, eh? and be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, if the love of Christ is pa passes knowledge, that means, brothers and sisters, we cannot comprehend why God would love us the way he does and that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. He then comes to verse 20 and says, God is able to do exceeding abundantly and above all that we could ever ask, I think. If we can ask it, pray about it, imagine it, think about it, then we can do it. God can do it. All that, brothers and sisters, we could ever ask or we could ever think about, God can do it. This is done according to his power that works in us. Verse 21 says, unto him be glory. Yes, unto him be glory and honor. What Christ is able to do through the power of the Holy Spirit, we cannot comprehend it with the human mind. He, def he defied you, the brothers and sisters. God, power, and ability defines, defies the human knowledge, the order of nature, and our ability to comprehend. We're, we're, we ask questions like, where did God come from? Can you answer that? How long has he been around or has he been in existence? Can you answer that? How big is the universe? Can you answer that? How he created this world? Can you answer that? You know, and yet man start to behave as if they are God. Um, how, how he created humankind, the intricacy of the human body, right? How he fosters procreation, right? How he keeps the world going every day. How he holds the world in tension. He keeps the stars in the sky. Can you answer that? We just cannot by human thoughts and minds find out who God is. Is in a in a in, in a similar way, brothers and sisters. We cannot we should not try to figure out God. Right? We should not try to figure him out because he's so big that we can't get around him. He's so high that we can't get over him. His entire presence fill the entire universe. The Bible says that whatever your mind is able to conceive, God can do it. I was talking to my electrician just this week and he said to me, I was telling him I need some of your conditions that are solar um, powered and 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 must be able to run and operate independently and he said he's not sure 
if those are, are already in existence. But then he came back and he said to me, but Rev, um, you know that somebody told me that if you can imagine it and think about it, somebody's already working on it in their workshop. And I said, look at that. That is from a human perspective. Now, the Lord is saying unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly uh, uh, above all that we ask or think according to the power that work in us. What is that situation in your life today that seems impossible? He says if you can think it and ask it, imagine it, or you can fathom it, you can, God can do it. It is beyond human comprehension how, but yes, he can. Yes, he can. Brothers and sisters, whatever the situation in your life today, I pray that it will break through the power of God and that if you may, if you are there thinking that it is impossible with God, what is impossible with man is possible with God. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Nothing lacking, nothing wanting in your life. Peace. From out of sea where he has Explain.